All right, let's get started. Um, so I got an email uh, today from one of you and kind of saying that this section was challenging. Uh, and that's okay. But, uh, and they were kind of saying that I don't know if I can actually get this done by today. And I, I do agree that this is a difficult section. Um, and so what I'm doing is I pushed back the date of this assignment by until Monday. So this assignment that's due, well, 8.4 that was going to be due tonight at 11. I've made it due Monday at 11. So that should give you a little bit more time and it will give you one more opportunity to talk to me about it before it's due. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, anyway, let's get started talking about some of these problems. Um, where do you want to start? Yeah. 27. 27. Okay. So number 27 is the integral from 0 to a third of dx divided by um, 9x squared plus 1 raised to the three halves. Okay. So the key to really all of these problems is making the right substitution. Let me see, I think this could be a little bit better. It's a little better. Okay. So the key is making the right substitution and so it all comes down to the three, uh, well, really, it really is just two things. You've got uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. And then you've got one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. But also you could rewrite that correct as secant squared theta minus one equals tangent squared theta. And between the three of those, that helps us to make our substitution. So the question is, what form does this one have? Is it kind of like a something squared plus one? Where do we see something squared plus one? This one, right? Uh, we have something squared plus one. So what I want to do is I want to make a substitution that involves tangent in some way. All right, the question is uh, how? So what I'd love is if this thing could come out to be like basically tangent squared plus one. So what I want to do is I'm going to substitute and I'm going to start by saying, what do I want X to be so that when I plug in X squared, this thing just becomes tangent squared of theta. Yeah. Yeah. One third of tangent of theta. So let me show you. So one third tan theta. Um, is going to be my substitution. Now, why? That's the important part is if I square this and I plug it in for X here, I get one ninth, which cancels the nine. That's good. And then I get tangent squared of theta. So I end up with tangent squared theta plus one, which is exactly what I have over there to plug in my secant squared theta. So that's what I want to do, but I still need to know, okay, so what does dx become? So I need to take the derivative over here and I get one third secant squared theta d theta. So any x will become this, any dx, which there's always only one of, will become this. So let's rewrite. 
So this is the integral of, well, on top I have dx. So that's one third secant squared theta d theta. On the bottom, I have nine times x squared. So I got one third tangent theta squared plus one, all of that to the three halves. Okay, so now let's do some work. Plug things in. The one third, oh, by the way, I didn't write in my limits. I probably should. So what we can do is we can say, okay, if x is zero, then what is theta? Well, if x is zero, one, if I multiply both sides by three, I still get zero equals tangent of theta. So the question is tangent of what gives me zero? Yeah, tan of zero, right? Because it's sine over cosine, sine of zero is zero. So we get zero. And then one third, if I put in one third over here, I could cancel the one third on both sides. I get tangent of theta equals one. When is tan of theta equal to one? Pi over four, very good. So I can change it to this. And now I never have to go back to X's if I don't want to. All right, the one third can just come out. And I have integral from zero to pi over four. On top, I have secant squared theta d theta. So secant squared theta d theta. On the bottom, when I square this, I get nine times one ninth, correct? So once I square the one third, so those cancel each other once I square it, and I just get tangent squared theta plus one, which shouldn't be very surprising because that's exactly what I substituted to do. Okay. But the tangent squared theta plus one is otherwise known as secant squared of theta. So this could be written as one third integral zero to pi over four of secant squared theta divided by secant squared theta d theta. But of course those cancel and I'm just left with one. So this is just equal to one third integral from zero to pi over four of one d theta or just d theta, which is one third theta evaluated from zero to pi over four. Now I can just plug in and I get one third times pi over four minus zero or pi over 12. Yeah. Oh, did I just forget that? That's not good. Uh, bummer. Thank you. Yeah, I messed up. Do, 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 do. Let's see where do I That's better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I just left that off. All right, so then we have a little more. Work. One third integral zero to pi over four of secant squared theta divided by, and now we can plug in secant squared theta here, and we get secant squared theta to the three over two d theta. All right, so we get one third integral from zero to pi over four 
Okay, so secant squared of theta raised to the three halves, we multiply the two together and we would just get secant cubed theta, correct? So we'd end up with a secant squared of theta over secant cubed of theta d theta, which is one third. Uh, that would just be one over secant of theta, correct? Two of these would cancel, two of those would cancel, and I just have one over secant of theta. One over secant of theta is otherwise known as what? Cosine of theta, right? So this is just integral, zero to pi over four, of cosine theta d theta. And that one I know. So antiderivative, we get one third, uh, this is sine theta evaluated from zero to pi to four. So that would be one third. Uh, sine of pi over four. What sine of pi over four? Square root of two over two. Square root of two over two. Uh, minus sine of zero. And sine of zero is zero. So we just end up with root two over six. That's it. Okay. Sorry about that. The funny thing is when I wrote down the original problem, I saw that three over two and I said to myself, don't forget that three over two. And then I forgot. That makes me sad. Anyway, any questions on this one? So I, I think that where is it that the problems come in these problems is, first of all, you got to get the right substitution, okay? If you get the wrong substitution and you put in like uh, sine instead of tangent or something, it just doesn't work, right? So that's the first step. And then the second step that I think that kind of makes these problems more difficult than average, maybe, if you're experiencing some trouble with these, is that the age-old problem of I don't really know my unit circle that well. And it's like every single problem, I have to use a unit circle. And it's like, yeah, that is unfortunately a problem. And it's if you don't know your unit circle, like just lights out, today's the day. Uh, there, you do need to know it for these problems, uh, and so you just need to learn it. Yeah. So if that was a minus one instead of a plus one, how would you differentiate? Yep. Yeah. How would you have? How would we have done it different if it was a minus one? Yeah. So would yes. we do the secant squared minus one, or would we do the sine? Yeah. Square? So you need something where it's something squared minus one. So what I would do is I rewrite this one because that one is also could be written as sine squared theta minus one equals cos uh, negative cosine squared of theta correct so that would probably be your best yeah uh am i saying this right yes so sine squared theta minus one is negative cosine squared theta. That works. Uh, that's, eh, if it was, no, I lied. I, I hate it. it. It would work. This is fine, but sometimes you don't want to be, sac I mean, subbing in a, if it was one minus something squared, then I would use a sum. Because the sine easily moves over here and you get one minus sine squared theta, then I do sine. If it's something squared minus one, it's easier to use a secant. Because then you're plugging in something that's positive, and that's usually what we're trying. So there's really three situations that come up. You've got one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. That's one situation. So you've got one minus something squared. That's the first situation. The second one is you have one plus something squared. 
right? And then you have the third situation is you have something squared minus one. And so these are the three situations that come up is one minus something, one plus something, and something squared minus one. And these are the substitutions that you would make in each case, a sine, a tangent, or a secant. So you just have to diagnose which of those three situations are you in and then make the correct substitution. The good news is if you forget this or something, Remember, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. One of those comes straight out of this. The other one, all you have to do is divide everything by cosine squared theta. You get this one. That's one of them. And then if you just rearrange this one, you get the other one. Does that make sense? So they all kind of are derivatives of this formula. Okay. Other questions? Oh, really? There were just examples, no lecture. Yeah, it was the same last week. Really? That is so weird. Okay. Well, I will take a look at that for sure to make sure that nothing is missing. Um, part of it is, I'm sure, uh, maybe I'll have to go back and look for sure if I recorded uh, an official lecture over this. But really, at the end of the day, all that there is is examples in some sense. Because what you're doing is you're just taking this and making the correct substitution. But I will check it out because that is odd. I felt like I have lectures over those, but uh, if not, yeah, that's good to know. Did, does that help at all? Like, does that clarify it a little bit more than maybe watching the lectures on YouTube, what you're looking for? So you're always looking for the form that shows up that it's something squared plus one, something squared minus one, or one minus something squared. And in each of those cases, you make the correct substitution, and then things usually go pretty well. Yeah? 17. 17, sure. We have an integral from 0 to 2 of x squared over x squared plus 4 dx. All right. So first of all, what form are we in? Are we in the first form, the second form, or the third form? Yeah, the second form. So that means we need to be substituting for a tangent theta of some sort. So we know that x needs to have a tangent theta in there. The question is, do we have a constant? And the answer is yes, because at the end of the day, what I want to happen is this to be tangent squared theta plus one? It's not plus one right now, it's plus four. So what would be wonderful if we're sitting right here? A four, because if there were a four here, I could factor the four out and I would just get like something squared plus one. So I want, after I substitute, 
there to be a four right there. So what do I need to put here so that after I square it, there'll be a four? Two. So this is the substitution I need to make. The x is two tan theta. Yeah. So is it so is that really just gonna be the square root of whatever your constant is in that number? Uh maybe. Uh because well, you mean whatever this number is? Well, it depends. Like, what if there were a three right there? Then it would be different. So what you have to do is you just have, in this case, yes. If it was just x squared plus something, then you have the square root. But if it were like, you know, 4x squared plus 4, well, you, then you wouldn't have to do anything. If it were 16x squared plus 4, well, then you have to, like, figure out how to divide the 16 by 4. So have to multiply by a half. So it just depends on your situation. But what you want at the end of the day, whatever this number is, you want to create that number in front of this one. Does that make sense? Okay, so in this case, the two will get it done. And dx is equal to, well, the derivative here is two hangs out, derivative of tan theta is secant squared theta Theta. All right, so now we can rewrite. This is equal to integral of x squared is on top, x is 2 tan theta. So we get 2 tan theta quantity squared on top. On the bottom, we get 2 tan theta quantity squared plus 4. And then we have dx, but dx is 2 secant squared theta d theta. So the dx, part of that I'll just write up here on top, 2 secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so now let's see what happens here. Simplify a little bit. When I square this out, I get 2 squared, which is 4. Uh, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's just do one thing at a time. So uh, I also should change the limits of integration. So if x is 0, I plug in x is 0, uh, then I get tangent of theta needs to be 0. And we just said that happens 0. What about 2? 2 divided by 2 is 1. Tangent of theta is 1 at same as last time. 5 over 4. Okay, now we're ready. So I get integral 0 to pi over 4 of, if I square this out, I get 4 tangent squared theta. 4 tangent squared of theta times 2 secant squared of theta. divided by 4 tangent squared of theta plus 4 d theta. All right. Now we can bring the constants out. On top, I have 8, correct, that I can factor out. On the bottom, I can factor a 4 out of both and bring it outside. And so I have an 8 on top, and I have a 4 on the bottom, integral from 0 to pi over 4. But now that I factored out of the bottom, I just have tangent squared theta plus 1, which is exactly what I want. And then on top, I have tangent squared theta times secant squared theta uh, d theta. Is everybody good with that? Any questions so far? All right. So now the 8 and the 4 obviously cancel. We get a 2. Integral from 0 to pi over 4. Of, okay, so everything on top stays the same, but the bottom now I can make a substitution 
and that turns into secant square root of theta. So I get tan square root theta uh, times secant square root theta over secant square root theta d theta. And so the secant square root theta is cancel, and I'm left with 2 integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tangent square root theta d theta. And now what? Yeah. Yeah, so now we're actually in a problem like from the last section because I don't know the antiderivative of tangent squared of theta, but I can use a trig identity to get me to something that I do know. So I could rewrite tangent squared theta as secant squared of theta minus one right here. And so I could write this as two integral zero to pi over four of uh, secant squared theta minus one, secant squared of theta minus one d theta, which is good because I know the antiderivative of both. Okay, so we still have the two. Antiderivative of secant squared of theta is tan theta. Antiderivative of negative one is negative theta. And we're evaluating from zero to pi over four. Almost done. So this is equal to two times, plug in pi over four, I get tan pi over four. Uh, minus pi over four. And then, let's see. Minus, if I plug in zero, I get tangent of zero, which is zero, right? Minus zero. So that's just zero. All right, so what do we end up with? Two times, what's tan pi over four? One, yeah. So this is just two times one minus pi over four. that's it. I don't think we're going to get a lot better than that. So, yeah, that's it. Other questions? Let's see. 69, somebody asked about. Last. Yeah, we can look at 69. one that's assigned? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so number 69, we have the integral from 2 plus root 2 to 4 of dx over square root of x minus 1 times x minus 30. Okay, and right now, this is not a uh, trig substitution problem as it stands. So the question is, can we maybe turn it into one, potentially? So let's do a little bit of work on the bottom and see what we get. So this is two plus root two to four, there's a dx. On the bottom we have square root of, if I multiply this out, I get x squared 
let's see, I get minus 3x minus 1x, so minus 4x, and then plus 3. All right. Um, and then they say in the problem, the kind of hint that you're given is it says complete the square in some way, and that might be able to help you. So if we complete the square, what are they talking about? They're saying that this um, could be written a different way, correct? Uh, we have a minus 4x. So what would the number here have to be in order for us to complete the square? It would need to be 4. And the, the way you know that is you take the thing in front of the x, divide it by 2, and square it. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 squared is 4. So if this were 4, it would be a perfect square. It is not. But we could write it that way. And the way we could do that is the following. So this is 2 plus root 2 to 4. This is dx. And then we could write this as the square root of x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4 minus 1. Survey by it. So, um, if this is the case, this now can be factored, and we could write this as 2 plus root 2 to 4 of dx over, uh, this is x minus 2, quantity squared, I still have a square root, minus 1. All right, so here's the deal. This is the form something squared minus one. Correct? So uh, what form is that over here? Yes, secant, I have something squared minus one. So what I'd like to do is make x minus two secant. All right, this is a little more challenging problem because we're substituting for something other than x, but I think it's going to be okay, and let's see how it goes. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to say, let's let x minus 2 be equal to secant uh, of theta. And if you like, and you say, I hate this, I don't like to write x minus 2 equals secant of theta, okay. Why don't you let x be equal to secant of theta plus 2? Right? Whatever makes you happy. But uh, in this case, I think it's going to work out because if this were the substitution, then the derivative of this side is dx because the derivative of 2 is 0. And on the other side, I get the derivative of secant of theta is secant theta tangent theta d theta. So now I can make these substitutions. Let's see what we get. So I get integral of dx, which dx is secant theta tangent theta d theta. And on the bottom, I get the square root of x minus 2 is otherwise known as secant of theta. So I get secant squared of theta minus 1, which is perfect because that's how I set it up. All right, secant squared theta minus 1 is otherwise known as tan. Oh, I should fix my limits here. So what did we have? We had 2 plus root 2 for x. Okay, so if x were 2 plus root 2 minus 2 equals secant of theta, then that would mean that uh, root 2 is secant of theta, correct? Or if I reciprocate both sides, which maybe makes it easier for me in some sense, then I would say that one over root two, which is also 
the square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 1 over secant, right? Uh, so secant is 1 over cosine, right? So if I reciprocate it, it's cosine. So when is cosine of theta root 2 over 2? Yeah, pi over 4. Yeah, so this is pi over 4. And then up here, what if I plugged in 4? So if I plugged in 4, I get 4 minus 2 is 2, which is equal to secant of theta. If I reciprocate both sides, that would mean that 1 half is cosine of theta. And when is cosine of theta equal to a half? What would it be? I over 3. Okay, now we've got our limits. Now we can move on. So rewrite integral pi over 4, pi over 3 of secant theta tangent theta divided by the square root of tangent squared theta after making the substitution d theta, which of course the bottom just gives me tangent of theta, and tangent of theta divided by tangent of theta is 1. So this guy cancels with this tangent of theta, and I'm just left with integral pi over 4 to pi over 3 of secant of theta d theta. So I guess I need to know the antiderivative of secant of theta. But that's something I covered with you in the lecture over 8.1. It was one of the six special integrals that I did in that lecture. One of them was integral of secant theta d theta. Does anybody remember what it is? It's the natural log of the absolute value of what's that? I believe so. Secant theta plus tangent theta. And that's all evaluated from pi over 4 to pi over 3. Okay, this is one that you should know. Because it just comes up a lot in these types of problems is the antiderivative of secant of theta is ln of absolute secant theta plus tangent theta. All right, now we're ready to plug things in. So this is equal to ln absolute value secant of pi over 3. I'm just going to write it in for now. Secant pi over 3, and then we might have to think, plus tangent pi over 3 of minus ln absolute value secant pi over 4 minus tangent pi over 4. Okay, so now let's think about what these things are. Uh, what's secant of pi over 3? If you like, that's 1 over cosine of pi over 3. What's cosine of pi over 3? One half. Yeah, one half. So it's 1 over one half, which is otherwise known as 2. Then I get tangent of pi over 4. We've done that one a few times today. What's that? 1. So I get 2 minus 1. Minus. Uh, oh, plus. Thank you. Yeah, plus. Okay. Minus ln of... 
Did I make a commitment? Yeah, because we were doing the five or three. Okay. Then you switched to five or four. Okay. Uh, five or three. One second. Okay, let me rethink, reset here. We're doing this, right? Let's start there. Let's do it right. LN. It is Friday for me as well, I guess. So uh, secant of pi over three is the same as one over cosine of pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is a half. One over one half is two. I think we're, we're good so far. Okay, plus this guy, right? Tangent of pi over three. Okay, tangent of pi over three is sine of pi over three over cosine of pi over three. So root three over two divided by one over two, which is root three. Okay. Minus LN, absolute value. Secant of pi over four. Secant of pi over four is one over cosine of pi over four, which is root two over two. So flip that and you get two over root two, which is root two. And then finally, this guy, which we already figured out, is one. Correct? Okay, did it? Did I miss anything? I think I'm good on this one. Yeah, I'm starting to doubt myself. Um, okay, now the question is, can we do anything else? Me, sort of, but nothing very nice, uh, because the. The rules of LN would say this is positive, so I could drop the absolute values. This is positive, I could drop the absolute values. And I could combine them into one LN if I wanted to and write it as LN of this divided by this. Meh, is it better? I don't know. Uh, they're about the same. So that looks pretty good. Sound good? Okay. Any other quick questions? I could probably, I don't know if I can work through a whole nother one, but I could help get one set up if that's helpful. Okay. If not, that is, did you have one or no? You're good? Okay, that's it for today then. Uh, have a good day. And I will check the lectures to see if like something got left out or something. But uh, yeah, have a great weekend. I'll see everybody on Monday. This homework 8.4 now is due on Monday. And the one that was due on Monday is now pushed to Wednesday. And I kind of, they dominoed back a little bit, but I think it's good. Have a good day.